Hello, welcome to this video. Sorry you'll have to suffer through another screen recording video with my crunchy audio, but today we have kind of a highly requested video I've had, but I tend to not do like very negatively focused type videos. But since I gave y'all a preview with like my 22 manga recommendations leading up to like my best and worst video, I figured I could go over all the manga I've dropped ever. And as you can see, I've started using my anime list since 2014, so this is all the manga I've dropped since I started reading manga, pretty much. I started it a little earlier than this, I think in 2012. But yeah, we'll just take a look through my, my anime list. I've used this this whole time pretty diligently, so everything should be pretty updated. This link is always in my description if you want to look at my page. I think my manga is actually privated, just because I like to keep a little bit of mystery with like my reading logs and stuff like that. But if you want to see my real-time updates for manga, you can look at my Goodreads. So yeah, without further ado, let's get into it. We'll go to my manga list, go to dropped, let's sort through last updated. I kind of went through and cleaned this up a little bit before this, like updating what I have dropped recently. And I'll just go through kind of why. I don't think I really need to justify myself why I dropped something. But I'm not going to be like, oh, this was bad, Ugh, I didn't like it, blah blah blah. I'll try to give some like actual reasoning as to why I dropped the manga. So yeah, starting with this first one, I think it's called Atsumori-kun's Bride to Be. You can also see how far I got into the series. This one I thought was okay, it's about kind of like an arranged marriage situation. They just didn't have the last couple of volumes for free on Kindle Unlimited and I didn't feel like paying for them, so I never finished. I thought this one was just okay. My Senpai is Annoying. This one is one I'm kind of on the fence about still. I still have one more volume to read physically, but I think it's getting a little stale. This one had a really strong start about a Senpai and a Kohai. It's supposed to be like an office romance comedy. The romance hasn't really developed anywhere. And there's some like weird comedic bits with like a minor and an adult that get a little too close for comfort in my opinion. So yeah, I haven't been vibing with it recently. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna drop it, but I might give the next volume a chance that I already own. Next we have Planet Test. This one I read the first volume of, didn't really enjoy it. I had recently read like The Martian and Project Hail Mary by Andy Weir and those are like top tier sci-fi series. So I think going into Planet Test I was already a little bit like had high expectations and they weren't really met, but I decided to read Vinland Saga instead and that one I highly enjoy. So I might go back to this one eventually, but in the foreseeable future I'm not planning to. Next, we have Miss Miazen would like to get closer to you. I read the first volume of this one in my first volume try vlog. It was alright. I thought it was going to be something a little more, not deep, but had a little more substance. I thought this was going to be a really good delinquent slash good girl trope. Not to Mars's level, but it needed to give a little something more than it was giving, in my opinion. Next, we have Blood on the Tracks. This is wrong. I've actually read up to volume 8, I think. And this is another one I am willing to go back to, maybe when the series finishes, because I heard that like volume 13 is just the prequel, the prologue. So this is more one on pause than completely dropped. But yeah, this one's super creepy about a mom and a son and their unhealthy relationship and them harboring some dark secrets. So if you want a messed up psychological thriller, I would recommend it, but I'm just taking a pause on it for now. Might revisit it, might not. Then we have Our Precious Conversations. This is another one I might go back to someday. Maybe if they release it in English, I have some of the Spanish volumes, but they're just so expensive to import that I haven't really felt up to it. But yeah, this one was okay. It's pretty comedic, but some of the conversations they have in here are pretty like heavy-handed and I don't enjoy them too much. And that's a shame because the whole point of the manga is them having some conversations, but a lot of them center around like the differences between men and women and how men act and girls act and... I don't know, I thought we moved past this as a society, but it's all right for what it's worth so far. Next, we have The Girl with the Sampaku Eyes. This one is adorable. I don't think I realized this was finished. But yeah, this one's adorable, but it's another one that's like just too sickeningly sweet and nothing much happens. The art is gorgeous. It's in full color in English. But yeah, it was just like cute shenanigans and I didn't really see a point in it. So one I might read if my library gets the volumes or something, but I wasn't like super enamored with the plot. Next we have The Wallflower. This is one I kind of just lost interest in, which is a shame as well because I bought so many of the volumes. It's really funny. It's like very similar to Oron, but it just doesn't hit as hard for me as Oron. There are some problematic things in this one just due to the age of it. I don't know. It was alright. If you don't mind some like old shoujo shenanigans, I think you'll like it. Next we have Oku. This one was just too hard for me. It was too difficult. 
It had some like very stylized old Englishy sounding stuff. It's set in the past. And I'm also not a huge fan of like this imperial palace type setting. I'm trying to read Apothecary Diaries, but it's also kind of on the chopping block due to that fact. But yeah, Oku, English is not my first language and I know people whose language it is and they still struggle with this. So I know I'm not the only one. Props to you if you got through it or if you can read this really easily, but for me, it was a bit too much. Next we have Kiss Me at the Stroke of Midnight. I don't think this one needs much of an explanation. I did not know it was age gap going into it. I just saw this like cute girl on the cover and I was like, oh, okay, I'll just try it because it was on Kindle Unlimited. But yeah, there's a pretty big age gap too. The guy's like 25, she's like 16. He's an idol also, which creates a power imbalance. But yeah, y'all know I don't mess with adult child age gaps. The guy also has like a butt fetish, which is kind of gross when he's fetishizing this young girl. But yeah, not my cup of tea. Kind of just solidified my dislike for these kinds of stories. Next we have Asadora. This one I dropped, I think after I read Pluto, because I was expecting to like all of Naoki Urasawa's works. And since I didn't like Pluto, I kind of started to reevaluate, like, did I even like the first volume of Asadora? Not really, so I dropped it. But then I read Monster, and I really liked Monster. So this is another one I might come back to. As you can see, I'm pretty indecisive about what I drop and don't drop because I hate not completing stuff. Like, I force myself to finish shows and books and movies and manga most of the time. Especially if I have, like, the full series, I'll probably read it, even if I'm not super enjoying it, which I need to stop doing in 2023. But yeah, I just need to let it go if I'm not super into it from the first couple volumes. And Asadora, that was the case with this one. I just didn't really get hooked on it. Didn't really care. I know it was a setup volume and I know Naoki Urasawa's works are slow goers, but nah. Then we have this one. I think the English title was like Monologue Woven for You. Another boring girl's love. I have a lot of trouble with girl's love. Wasn't a big fan of it. I only read one volume. Then we have The Breaker, which is Manhua. This is one. It's like a martial arts fighting kind of delinquent. A little bit of sci-fi, I think. One, the reason I couldn't get into this one was like kind of the crude humor. I didn't like it. I would compare it to something like maybe GTO, if that's your thing, you would probably like it. But for me, I'm not a fan of kind of this like pervy adult character mentor figure. And that's what was in The Breaker. Next, we have Sensei's Pious Lie. This one is one that the topics were just like too triggering for me and I couldn't see it ending in a good way. So I just dropped it while I was ahead. I could see the signs of what was brewing from the first volume and I did not really like it, so I dropped it. Then we have my boss is a sheep but I'm a wolf. Or it's the opposite maybe. I'm a wolf but my boss is a sheep, something like that. This one was all right. I thought it'd be more like Beastars but it was kind of just like a fluffy little office romance. More like Wultacoy than Beastars. They just happen to be animals. I don't know. It wasn't enticing enough for me to keep going with it. It was just okay. Then we have Our Teachers Are Dating. This one was a weird one. It's a girl's love, their co-workers, their teachers, which is fine and dandy, but their relationship is very surface level in my opinion. They have a lot of sex, which I wasn't expecting, very explicit, but there's not much connection or chemistry between them in my opinion. And also the students are like rooting for them and shipping them. One of the girls in their class is like, not a Fujoshi, but someone obsessed with like lesbian relationships. I don't know what it's called. But yeah, she's super creepy and like wants to see their interactions and stuff like that. And it's like, no, no, no thanks. So I dropped it halfway through. Even though it's only four volumes, it's like, I don't want to read more of this. Next we have Kaiji. This one I just got too impatient. Didn't want to wait for the physical releases. Denpa is so slow. It'd be one I'd want to binge all the way through, but who knows when it's going to end. And I didn't care enough to wait for that ending, if you get what I mean. Next we have Bride Story. This is just one I dropped because the volumes are expensive and my library didn't have more than volume one. This is one I've been assured tackles the age gap really well, but I'm still like feeling icky about that sort of stuff, of course, even if it is a historical setting. So yeah, I don't know. The art is gorgeous. I'm more willing to try Emma by the author. I think that one is not age gap, but there is like a power dynamic. It's like a maid and her employer. So like master servant, which I'm not as opposed to as like other power dynamics, but we'll see. Bright story though, I don't think will be for me in the long run. Next we have My Androgynous Boyfriend. This one was really cute. The art was great, but it's one where I didn't really see the point in it. Like, Girl with the Senpaku Eyes. Like, it was cute, but I didn't see it going anywhere super enjoyable for me, so I dropped it while I was ahead. Full Metal Alchemist. This is one I think I'm just gonna do the anime for. I read the first three of the, like, collector's editions, so this is inaccurate what chapter I'm on, but 
I like the story. I just really couldn't get into it from the get-go. I'm sure it's one that needs to build up some of the action, but I think I'm just gonna switch to the anime. I know it's kind of a crime I haven't read it already since it's like a classic or watched it, but it's just that one that I've never gotten a chance to get into, but hopefully soon. Because I love Arakawa's other works like Silver Spoon and Arslan. Next we have Crimson Hero. Wow, this is probably gonna be a long video. I said that I didn't have that many, but it looks like I have more than I thought I did. Crimson Hero, I really like the idea of it. It's like a volleyball shoujo, but there was a love triangle. One of the guys in the love triangle pretty much assaults her at one point and I dropped it after that. I don't care for that sort of stuff. I don't care if this is an older manga either. It's like a hard pass for me when stuff like that happens. Next, Asmanga Dayo. Just didn't find it funny. It's supposed to be a comedy manga. Comedy is very subjective, so I get that. I didn't find it hilarious, but I love Yotsuba by the same author, so I don't know why the comedy just didn't hit for this one for me. Then we have Perfect World. I read the first two volumes of this. I think it was just a little too melodramatic for me. I like the disability representation, but I think it was going to be like too dramatic for me in the long run. I've heard from people that their relationship is very tumultuous, and sometimes I like that, sometimes I don't. It just didn't really work for me in these first two volumes. Then we have Ten Dance. This is one I thought the art was really good. I like the ballroom dancing aspects, but I just didn't like the dynamic of the couple. They had a very like banter heavy, kind of playful, kind of enemies, like they're rivals in the ballroom dancing world, but then they practice together kind of in secret, like the world thinks they hate each other, but secretly they like each other, but they carry that sentiment kind of into their relationship. Like we're supposed to hate each other, right? But I don't know. I just don't really like that playful push and pull type thing in a relationship in fiction or really in real life, to be honest. Some people find that charming. Like if you like something like Pride and Prejudice, like kind of Mr. Darcy vibes, you would probably like Ten Dance. Let me let me not. This one had a step sibling romance plot in like the first four volumes. Couldn't get past that, even though everyone's like, oh, it gets solved, it gets solved. No thanks. Which is a shame because I haven't read any other works by Iwasaki Saka, but this one kind of turned me off from all of them, to be honest. Then we have Honey So Sweet. This one, the main couple was cute, but it suffered from like lots of other factors going wrong. There was like a pedophile, some incest stuff going on with the side characters. So it was like, why? Why did that have to be in there? I don't know why. Because the main couple was cute enough to focus on, but whatever. Then we have Kubo Won't Let Me Be Invisible. This one I just didn't like the first volume, found it kind of boring, didn't feel captured by the characters. I might watch the anime for this one since it's coming out soon, but I know a lot of people like this, so good on you. If you like something like Komi, you would probably like this one. Next we have Borto. This one's kind of funny. I read like the first couple chapters when it came out. I've only seen the original Naruto anime. I haven't watched or read Shippuden, but I was just kind of curious about like Naruto's son, so I read a little bit of it. Maybe I'll come back to it if I properly read Naruto, but this was kind of funny that it's on here, that I even recorded this. I don't know why. But next we have Meisan Ikoku. I just cannot get into Rumiko Takahashi. I don't know why. I don't know if the other ones are on here, but I tried. Round my one half, I've tried Inuyasha, and I don't know, just something about her style doesn't really get to me. Misuni Koku didn't like the characters. The releases are really nice though, they're like collector's editions for it, but yeah, couldn't really get into it. Not really a fan of her works, and I know that's kind of controversial to say because a lot of people love her, but it's just not for me. Then we have A Man and His Cat. This one I read more than one volume of. I think I read three. This one was pretty cute. I've heard it ramps up on the drama later in the series. It becomes like a music drama manga. So I'm kind of more interested in it now, but I don't have cats. I'm extremely allergic to cats, actually, so I don't connect with, like, the whole pet owner dynamic. I think if you do, you would like this one more. But yeah, I thought this one was alright, but didn't see a point in continuing. Next, we have A Tropical Fish Grins for Snow. Just wasn't really captivated by it. Mediocre girls love, in my opinion. This one, I don't remember the English title, but it's by the same author of Orange. I thought the first volume was really messy, like a lot of different plot points and themes, and I don't think the second volume has even come out in English and it's been years, so I don't know if this is a dropped series, the author's in hiatus, etc. But the first volume was too messy for my tastes. Then we have Whisper Me a Love Song. This one was also cute from the first volume, but another kind of like mediocre girls love. <laughs> the girls love can't catch a break, I'm sorry. I, I just can't find ones I really love, which is a shame, because like literally I am a woman lover, so... Why can't I find stuff I like other than Casa Sun and Blue into You? But was just okay. Didn't feel the need to continue. Library Wars. Oh, this one I hated the first volume. I think I have like a scathing review somewhere on it. But it's been a while since I dropped it. I think the reason was I didn't like the main character. It was kind of an enemies to lovers dynamic. She was kind of trying to be like this girl boss type character, but I couldn't get into it. 
and I feel like they tried to cram in too much lore. It's kind of like a political based shoujo and I'm excited to read stuff like Yona because I hope it does better than this but yeah I really did not like Library Wars. Then we have Yosakura Quartet. This is one by the artist who does all the concept art and stuff for Durarara which is my favorite anime so I wanted to check out the author's like original work and another one that was just like kind of messy it was like a supernatural type series not my type it's still ongoing though oh my gosh I think this is a really long running series that I don't hear much people talk about only the first five volumes are available in English anyway from Del Rey so they're not gonna print any more but yeah just seem messy shallow kind of a ripoff of Gintama from the first volume so yeah then we have his favorite this was kind of a weird one it's like a high school romance it's between these two guys one guy's like the super popular whatever guy and then the other guy is like considered super ugly but the popular handsome guy is the only one who pays attention to him and sees his true personality but there is some like connection they had from their childhood and stuff like that just some kind of weird themes in this one I think I read like five volumes of it though so I got decently far into it to form an opinion I think but yeah that's another thing people say like you can't have a full opinion because you didn't finish it so I guess not these are just my opinions from like what I've read of it so take it with a grain of salt I guess if these are like your favorite series I'm sorry my opinion is not legitimate I guess because I didn't finish the series but yeah these are just my honest thoughts I'm trying to be more honest <laughs> And not just be like, oh, like, it was so, it was so, it was so, I just dropped it, whatever, no. No, there's reasons why I've dropped these things. Next we have, crap, what is this one called in English? I was gonna say, how do we relationship, but this is not how do we relationship. We never learn, we never learn, that's what it is. This is the one everyone compares to quintessential quintuplets. I didn't really like that one either from the anime, I haven't tried the manga for it, but we never learn. I just didn't like the tropes of the girls, it's a harem series, a nerdy guy trying to tutor all these girls. And yeah, it wasn't really my thing. Urimichi Onisan, this one was a comedy manga that the comedy didn't hit with me. I don't know why, because I am literally clinically depressed, but <laughs> Urimichi Onisan, like, it just didn't hit. I also didn't like how he was kind of talking about some of his pessimistic ideas with the kids that he worked with. Like, don't corrupt the kids, man. Keep that to yourself and to your adult friends. Then we have Hatsuharu. This one I had high hopes for because it's like a shoujo from the male's perspective, but he switched up his feelings on the main character so fast, like he didn't like this girl at first, but then all of a sudden he's enamored with her because of some certain instance and it wasn't relatable or believable to me in my opinion. Round my one half, I don't know if people feel the same as me or if I'm like looking too deep into it, but the whole like gender swap, body swap kind of thing is really not my cup of tea unless it's done really well. I think it requires nuance that Round my one half did not have. So I had to drop it. I think after two volumes, I had had enough. Then we have Cross Game. This is a baseball series. I think it's the only baseball series we have physically in English, which is a shame that I didn't like it so much. I like a good slice of life sports romance series, like something like Baby Steps, but for some reason Cross Game, I couldn't get into it. The first volume caught me so off guard. There's like an event that happens I didn't know was a thing. But yeah, one that I'm willing to kind of come back to someday maybe. It's by a very claimed and loved author. I think it's kind of similar vibes to Rumiko Takahashi. Maybe that's why I didn't like it so much. But if you like her, you probably will like Cross Game. Then we have Blade of Immortal. I've talked about this before. Just didn't like it. I'm not a huge fan of like bloody action seinen type stuff. And that hits all those points. So yeah, couldn't really get into it. Otomen. Okay, this one's kind of a meme on my channel at this point, but I guess I'll explain why I don't like Otomen more clearly here. I responded to a comment like the other day about it. I should probably just paste my response up on the screen, but Otomen is about a guy who likes stereotypically girly interests and he falls for this girl who likes stereotypically manly interests. So it's trying to be this like commentary on like interests aren't gendered, which is like great and fine and dandy, but the way they go about it kind of like enforces gender roles in my opinion. Like yeah, okay, so this girl likes stereotypically manly things. So when they're in a relationship, all the friends are like, oh, that's that's your husband, that's your husband. And then to him, it's like, oh, you're the wife, you're the wife. And like, I don't know, like it doesn't do anything for the conversation in my opinion. And also the transphobia is rampant from the first like chapter. So take that as you will. But then we have Comey. Comey, I've also done a dedicated video to Comey, which is like kind of wild because I don't do those anymore. But Comey, Comey and Tadano were great. I actually do enjoy the anime for this. I just can't stand some of the side characters. They are supposed to be like tropes, like the yandere trope. This girl who's in love with Komi and she like kidnaps Todno and stalks her and 
tries to take pictures of her underwear and like creepy shit like that, but people think it's funny. And I don't. Ooh, I cuss. I don't think I ever cuss on this channel, but yeah. She annoyed me. And then there's like this other character who is like gender ambiguous. I think that's the term the manga used. But there are just like some out of pocket comments made to that character, like, oh, like what bathroom do you use? And stuff like that. It's like, why? Why did that need to be there? And I think the anime toned down a lot of the like potentially problematic stuff. It's still in there, but it's more bearable in my opinion. So yeah, it's a shame about all the side characters in my opinion, even though Komi and Tadano are like really cute. And then the last series we have, Hori Mia. This is another one I've talked extensively about why I don't like Hori Mia. I read this way, way back in the day. As you can see, it's the first series I ever dropped. Hori Mia is the fault of this video pretty much. If I hadn't dropped Hori Mia, I wouldn't have realized, oh, I can just drop series. I don't need to force myself to keep reading these. But yeah, I heard Hori Mia like physically back in the day before I even started my channel. I think as you all know, as the series goes on, Hori Mia follows less of like the main couple and goes a lot into their friends and their side characters, which is fine. But I wasn't really a fan of them. I didn't really care about their stories. I wanted it to be more on Hori and Mia because that's the title of the manga. So yeah, I got like halfway through the manga, dropped it. I also don't like Hori as a character, not to like bag on women here, but she exhibited some really kind of like controlling behaviors. I don't know, it felt like Mia was kind of miserable throughout the relationship at some points. And she's also like a little bit homophobic. Some of the comments she made, I was like, ooh, okay. But that's just me. Maybe I was reading into things too much, but Hori Mia, not my thing, dropped it. Happy for y'all that the last volume's finally coming out and the art book and all that stuff, the anime came out. That was like my personal hell when the anime came out and I saw this series all my time like constantly. I had to block the word Hori Mia on Twitter because I just didn't want to see it. And then the, the episode that came out when they had sex, oh my gosh. Sorry for the spoilers, but in the manga, it's extremely uncomfortable. Like her little brother, it's implied that like he kind of heard them doing the do. And yeah, it was just not heartwarming at all when they have the like scene in the morning where he's like, are you taking my sister away from me? Blah, 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 blah. No. Nah. Nah. And then Hori Me is also based on like a webcomic and I would implore you to look up like what that scene is in the webcomic as well because ooh, that's some interesting stuff right there. So yeah, sorry I kind of ranted about these series at the end here. These are my trio of like <laughs> series I've hated on the most pretty much on my channel. But again, don't take my opinions too seriously because I didn't finish these series. I dropped them. I was weak. I didn't continue all the way through. But yeah, let me know what you thought of this. Again, don't expect me to do very many like negatively focused videos like the manga i hate the most it's right here otaman and horimiya <laughs> y'all already heard my opinions on this but yeah so look forward to my best and worst videos you'll see which of these i thought were the worst of the worst we're just scratching the surface here <laughs> but yeah thanks for watching so stay so happy so healthy and i'll see you in the next one also let me know what series you've dropped are any of these your favorite series have you dropped any of these series also I would love to know in the comments.